Well, good Tuesday and welcome back to Table Talk. We are here this week with Pastor Andrew Wild. Pastor Andrew Wild with your message yesterday, God and Israel. And uh, also this season in Table Talk, you might've noticed that we're inviting guests from our church in. And so this week, well, Eddie's our guest, but I'm gonna let Andrew introduce his guest <laughs> to the table. So, Andrew, so th this is my friend, Eddie Shapira. Um, you might recognize Eddie. He's He's been around the church for many, many years. I got to know Eddie about 11 years ago when I came here. and. Uh, You've probably seen him serving on the coffee bar team, or maybe if you've been to River Birch Lodge, Eddie and his wife, Michelle, own River Birch. And you'll see in a minute why I invited him. That's right. Awesome. Very berry salmon salad. That's it. Oh, man, that's good. <laughs> well, thanks Thanks for coming to the table. Of course. We look forward to the conversation. So we're going to get right into it. Okay. We had several questions this week. So some of them we're actually having to respond back off camera, which was awesome. But we pulled some together, and we want to answer a few, and we'll get to some conversations. So the first one was from Paul. And Paul said, um, you know, Andrew, when you talk about the remnant of Jews in mm -hmm. Roman 11, Romans 11, is this a similar reference as to Revelation 7, 4, where we see the 144,000 mm -hmm. of each tribe spoken of? And Paul said specifically, is it your supposition that there will be an expansion of the remnant into a significant Jewish conversion during an eschatological future millennial age? Whew. Yeah. I got that out. <laughs> nice job. So, Your thoughts, yeah. Uh, so so um, maybe to rephrase it here briefly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he, the question is about, and I want to thank Paul for a really that's good a question. question. It's yeah. obviously someone that spent some time in Scripture and is thinking about mm -hmm. this the way that I think we as believers should. He's like a Berean here. We, we, mm -hmm. He should be commended for this. Uh, the reintegration of, of the Jews or the natural branches back into the tree uh, when, when is this happening? I think that um, I, I feel comfortable just saying that it's going to happen at, at the, the end of times. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think what Paul's wondering is, is it happening in the millennial reign? Is it happening in, a, you know, as, as we talk about eschatology, which is the study of future things, there's a couple different theories here. There's a, there's a post-millennial, there's an amillennial, there's a pre-millennial. Is this is happening during a millennial reign where, where Christ is reigning and um, I don't know, I guess it wouldn't surprise me if it happens then, but I would lean more toward an amillennial view, which is to say that there, there isn't a literal millennium and that this is just going to happen. And I, I think it's going to happen around the, the time that Jesus returns because of what it says in verse 15, where it says, um, for if the rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what would their acceptance mean but life from the dead? And so when Jesus returns and there's that resurrection of the dead, I think it's just... Yeah. In time, future point in time. Well, and I think also maybe he's getting at that this is, some will say that this is 144,000 of each tribe that, um, or total, 12,000 of yes. each tribe that will um, become sort of uh, missionaries to the entire, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to Gentiles and Jews primarily yeah. though, and sort of work back in. Um, I, I would just say briefly too, I, I, I think, and I mean, a lot of godly, intelligent, you know, biblical yeah. people have varying views on this, yeah. and so that's okay. Uh, but I, I sort of fall back into the uh, the apocalyptical language of Revelation. Mm -hmm. uh, I see the 12,000 of the tribes, I see the 12 of the apostles, and the thousand, which is just a number that we see in all of Scripture mm -hmm. as meaning all or completed. Yeah. Uh, the, Psalm 50, the cattle on a thousand hills. Well, God owns a thousand and one hills too, but that's just that's yeah. just like we say millions mm -hmm. or something. And so I see this as really an entire, um, sort of the entire community of the redeemed mm -hmm. at this time. And this is just the language that mm -hmm. says, um, you know, all of these will be redeemed. And this is what John sees, that, that all who have um, received mm -hmm. Christ. And, um, you know, I, and I think the tribal, and we'll get off of this one to the next question, but I think the order of tribes here in Revelation 7 is, is unique as well, because there's a couple things that don't match elsewhere in Scripture. Judah's listed first. Uh, which is, you know, uh, the, yep. the, the, the lion of Judah, Jesus, that, you know, the tribe for which it descended. Uh, but also Dan is not listed. And Dan was often thought of as the tribe uh, for which there was much idolatry. Uh, in fact, non-biblical mm -hmm. writings would talk about that coming out of Dan and Antichrist. Um, and so Manasseh is listed as a 12. Manasseh is a great uh, or a grandson mm -hmm. of Jacob. Yeah. So I think that just, and Levi's mentioned, it was mm -hmm. Levi's not mentioned in the other. Yeah. So I think this is a way that was written symbolically mm -hmm. to express that I see all of the redeemed. Yeah. Sealed by God where mm -hmm. Satan in ver chapter 13 yeah. seals his people, yeah. God is sealing his people. Mm -hmm. so, so Israel in Roman, or in 
Romans 11 means something different than Israel means in Revelation yes, 7. That's, that's, a, that's a short way of saying it. I, yeah. I believe, but again, there's many views on that. Mm -hmm. And the fact he moves right into the great multitude of every nation, I think, is a continuation yeah. of John's vision yeah. of uh, just sort of God's people coming forward. Yeah. Anyway, great question, a good, good, good connection. But widespread conversion of the Jewish people happening in a millennium, in an actual millennium, I, I would say, as I was reading the commentaries and prepare, preparing, that, that is certainly a view that is held among Sure, many absolutely. Wonderful Pretty cool. biblical absolutely. commentators. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So, um, great connection there as well. So, also a connection. Um, the question, oh, I'm, I'm gonna, that's I'm your gonna, question. Yeah, you're, you're, gonna, you're on the hot yeah, seat now. Oh, no, so, I don't like second that. question. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. there, there's a reference here to a cultivated olive tree. It's a big illustration that's okay, kind of right. center stage in this chapter. Romans 11:21. This is a question from Scott. Here's what the here's what the verse says: For if God did not spare the natural branches, neither will He spare you. Mm. So this seems to indicate the believers can be cut off, or in other words, lose their salvation. Yeah. Uh, what would you say to that? That's a great question too. Um, I, I would say that again, what's being uh, what's being spoken of here within the context of Scripture. I think uh, Paul's saying, look, um, if, if, he was, if, he, if he did not spare an apostate people, a nation, um, he won't spare an apostate church. You know, he won't spare an apostate, a, a non-Israelite people. Um, even though the apostate people, yeah. The, the, the natural branch that was broken off that he did not spare, we know many Jews were coming to Christ then too. Mm -hmm. So we know there were still Jews within the tree family, even as the branch was being yeah. broken off. And yeah. so to, to me, I think what Paul's saying is this is not a, um, the Gentiles might lose their salvation, right? There's, there's, this isn't sort of contrary to the perseverance yeah. of, of the saints mm -hmm. of any means. I think just as a people, we can lose God's, uh, you know, God's mercy, mm -hmm. His favor, mm -hmm. and that um, the Israelites and non-Israelites yeah. alike uh, can sort of have this hardened heart mm -hmm. toward God, even as there are still believers, there are mm -hmm. still remnants. Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, Paul's message is um, just don't be haughty, don't be prideful. I think right? that's At the right. end of the day, just don't, don't even worry about going there. Yeah. <laughs> right? so. I mean, it, it, we got to remember this is an illustration too. Yes. And yeah. so let's not try and make more out of the metaphor that's than right. he's intending. Yeah. Uh, what I would say. Yeah. All right. So. I, I think I'm going to jump in. I'm going to jump in on the Please. haughtiness. I think yes. that, is, that is so um, perfect for what I, what I grew up with and what I, I feel as far as, you know, mm -hmm. growing up. And this will uh, tie in, I think, at some point, just the haughtiness or the, the, the hypocrisy is my, might not okay. be the right word. But yeah. I saw a lot of that as far as um, Christians at that time growing wow. up. So. Anyway, I think the humility, mm -hmm. transparency, I think are so uh, important Almost for like all of us. you saw non-Jew Christians uh, sort of claiming a favor of God over all other people. Absolutely. Particularly, yeah. possibly Western and American Christians, I would guess. For sure. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Eddie. That's a great point. This, yeah, this leads in perfectly, Eddie. So, um, to the analogy, there's, there's one olive tree. There's natural branches that are grafted back in, representing Jewish people. Then there are these branches from the wild olive shoot that are grafted in, representing Gentile people. Now, I know our identity first and foremost is we're in Christ, but kind of playing off Paul's analogy here. Natural branch or, or uh, a wild Natural olive Natural all the way, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, uh, I'm, you know, proud to say that, you know, I'm, I'm you know, um, one of the chosen people, you know, <laughs> and, and as far as just the natural branch. But it's interesting, you know, as a kid growing up yeah. in the synagogue and, and going through my bar mitzvah and everything else, you know, um, being Jewish, you know, part of it was as far as being a minority, you know, being Jewish was, there was a lot of negativity growing up by mm -hmm. being Jewish because I was like the only Jewish kid in Weaverville, North Carolina. Oh. And so um, it was hard. There was tough love in the beginning, um, but I was very, um, I came to a point throughout my life, I was very... Uh, proud to be Jewish, um, but that's, uh, you know, after I became a Christian, you know, I, had, I was challenged to really grasp my, uh, my, my Hebrew and my Jewish background um, as far as, to how, you know, it's Jesus, you know, and to, because the hardened hearts, like you mentioned, there's, I was surrounded by hardened hearts, mm -hmm. especially when I became a Christian, yeah. but uh, 
the heart and hearts is that's a tough one for Jewish people that haven't been loved like Christ loves us, you know, by the Gentiles, you know, by mm. Christians. You know, I never saw that that Christian love growing up. I never saw it, you know, and it's um, the heart and heart. It, us Jewish people are hard sometimes to get through. Mm -hmm. I mean, hard. Yeah. Wow. I'd love to pull on that thread just a little bit more. So, uh, you know, it's very obvious in Romans 11 where he's, he, Paul makes it clear that he's writing to the Gentiles. And, uh, and he says, do not be proud, do not become arrogant. Uh, you, I guess, based on kind of some of your experiences, why do you think the apostle had to give this guidance, this, this warning? Well, I, I got turned off from Christianity when I was called a Christ killer. Wow. It's, you know, oh. six years old. So I'm like, you, you know, you Christians do your thing. I'm, I don't want any part of you, you know. So I was really, I put the wall up then mm. because I felt less than. And um, so that was that was a big stumbling block for me. Wow. And, um, you know, I'm sure people tried. I had a great high school coach. that was a strong Christian, just loved me for who I was. But besides that, you know, going in a country town and being different, talking mm -hmm. a little different and being different, it was a real challenge for me to see Christian love, see anything mm -hmm. positive from it. So um, I don't know if that answers no, your question. No, that's good. And, 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 and you know, Yes, with, with David, I just say that's a, that's a shame that happened, especially when we read the passage and we, and we see that Paul's guidance mm -hmm. to, to the Gentile believers is the exact opposite. I mean, it, it says that, that, that it rather it's through our faith that we should make Israel jealous. And he says, you know, by that means try and save some. Um, and and you're, you're now part of the olive tree. You've, you've, been, you've been grafted back in. I guess, was, was there a... Was there a Gentile believer in your life that, that kind of played a part in that? And, and I'm going to make this a two-part question. If so, kind of what advice would you give to those watching that would say, yeah, I've, I've got a Jewish friend and I would love to um, just kind of arouse something in them, in them that would make them want to have the relationship with God that I have? Sure. All right. Two, two-fold question. Yes. I'm going to try to keep that together. I got the first part. Yes, um, my wife, Michelle, has been loving me unconditionally. Wow. Oh, my goodness. And, you know, I would have given up on myself way before, you know, she was, she's been amazing. So sometimes I, I forget, I, I leave her out in the respect because it, it took men to really mm. break through, you know, God having mm -hmm. the bat and these guys being the bat. Yeah. So um, the new Canaan group, my mm. business partner, uh, you know, just seeing, seeing love and seeing, mm. uh, you know, just a great example yeah. uh, as, as far as being a man, first of all, and this, you know, people that love Jesus and just being real and transparent and, you know, being able to, the transparency of failure, you know, when, you know, where they've fallen down and sharing that, I'd be afraid to share their failures because Christ knows it all and Christ loves me and I'm okay with it. I've come to grips with my mistakes. So seeing that, um, seeing that firsthand with the new Canaan guys and uh, my business partner and and other guys, you know, I had a lot of conversation with David yeah. Beatty early on when I was kicking the tires of, of Christianity. Wow. So just the humility is just, mm -hmm. uh, I mm. can't stress this being humble in spirit is just so mm. huge. Um, mm. Second part of that question. So I advice for, for those of us that are kind of try and follow in Paul's footsteps here and live our faith in a way that's going to arouse desire among the Jewish people to, to have faith. I think the humility, I think, you know, seeing for us Jewish people to see something in, you know, in you guys and what I yeah. saw, seeing that, uh, first of all, it was confidence too, seeing guys that are confident with who they are, but not in a boastful way, more of just a, a real, um, I don't say the joy of the Lord, but just, um, just their confidence because of Christ. I mean, Christ, I could tell that they got their confidence from Jesus. Wow. Yeah. Um, and that was just huge to me. That was just powerful that yeah. this guy's, you know, he's got going on over here and what's he got that I don't have? And, you know, it came to Jesus, you know? Yeah. Wow. Thank you for sharing that with us, Eddie. Yeah. You're welcome. Well, I almost hear Paul in that as well as when he's talking about all throughout all of Paul's letters. What's he, what's he, is the apostle of Gentiles, what's he saying? Be different, right? Be mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. And treatment is certainly, you know, part of that. Be, 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 be different. And in our world today, be showing that love is different yes. than, than yeah. you know, the, the masses of people out there for sure. Yeah.
Oh, that's a good word. That's a good word. Well, um, we'll just, the last question was, was really sort of tied into that, and so we'll acknowledge it, you know, from Lee, the one we've had here is, you know, maintaining a peace. Uh, maybe it's a little something else to think about. Uh, when we know that those who are close to us are not, uh, whether natural or wild branches, are just not part of the tree, um, have, have sort of, have continued to be uh, rejecting Christ, and so, do, do we ever come to it? She says, do you, you know, do you, how do you get a piece of that? That they're, they're, they may not be the same brush as they're cut away for their unbelief. Yeah. Do you come to peace about that? or I, I, You know, on, on the one hand, I think we as Christians, we want to be able to say and to sing, it is well with my soul. Uh, and yet at the same time, I think when, when the Apostle Paul thinks about his kinsmen, his, his, his brothers that, that aren't part of that tree, it, it says that, he says, I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. And so in, in the sense of peace, do we ever be like, hey, I'm okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't, know, I don't know if he's there. I, I, I don't think he has peace in that sense. I think it's always a burden he's carrying around. And I, I feel like I, I, I'm looking at myself and feeling like I'm failing in, like my family, you know, because it's so tough. I mean, it's so hard. And, you know, I told him right out of the gate, you know, I've never felt that emptiness go away until I asked Christ into my heart. Mm. And it's, it's so because of the walls that were put up for their childhood as well. I mean, they, they faced the same thing I did, and they never had people that, I had to really impress, mm. show the Christ, Christ-like love before. Mm. They, they've never had that. And so as far as getting to peace with, you know, you got to make friends. You got to get out there a little bit. You can't just stay in your house or stay with your, your mix of people. You are who you hang out with. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. unfortunately, you know, my, my dad is hanging out, with, you know, guys like him that are really lost. So I need to try to remember that I need to be, you know, forthcoming with lots of love and understanding. Yeah. And not frustration because I have a ton of that. Yeah. yeah. So well, anyway. Yeah. Well, thanks guys, and thank you, Lee. Thank you, everybody, running questions, and we, we come to the point of our uh, table talk Tuesdays where uh, the final word. So really, just ten words or less um, impressed upon you this week in any of your study or anything. Right? The, just the section as a whole. I think I could summarize where Paul's at uh, when he says, "My heart's desire and prayer to God is that they may be saved." Mm. And so. Um, that's that's what I'm leave, leaving with. Eddie, would you have a final word? For us? Um, I just got to keep working on uh, loving my my fellow okay. Jewish folks. There you go. Well, and my final word would be again from the Word, uh, eleven one, the hope that we saw last week about you know even some that aren't looking for me, I found. Um, I asked then, has God rejected His people? By no means. Yeah. A final word, I think, of hope for everybody. Amen. Well, thanks, guys, for coming to the table. Thank you. uh, Thank you, guys, for joining us. And next week, uh, we'll see you back for Table Talk.